Today we'll be doing this charcoal lion. Um, the image that I got was off of Pixabay, so it is free. And I'm actually trying something out new. Um, I've never done this before, but I'm using pastel mat to do a charcoal piece on. So I thought it would be pretty cool. And I am actually using the tinted charcoal paint pan set. Boy, <laughs> I can't talk today. Tinted charcoal paint pan set from Derwent. Um, they had the uh, charcoal and it's like water soluble. And I thought if I use like the pastel mat that I can actually, it'll basically it'll take the water because of how thick it is. So I'm kind of testing it out to see if that's true or not. And I'm using a brush and some water and using the darkest of the tinted charcoal, which is called dark. So in this, I'm just going to go ahead and go over it. It's going to take several layers. And also, I wanted to also test out to see how the paper actually takes on water. Because, I mean, I I had no clue. So in this, I'm just I'm kind of showing you without actually speeding it up right away. Just showing you just how time, you know, I'm, done, I'm not going through it really, really quick. You know, I just take my time and... I'm one of those artists that I go really slow. So even whenever I speed it up, it looks almost normal. <laughs> so I really had to speed it up. I mean, most probably most people didn't have to speed up that much. But to me, I had to because of just how slow I am. But there's nothing wrong with that. So here I'm having to dip, dip in the brush in water several times. I'm using nice longer strokes so that way it kind of gives like spreads it out some i notice on the pastel mat when you're using water and the charcoal it doesn't really spread out that much it really really absorbs into that paper um so you kind of have to really get your brush wet so i ended up switching over to a water brush and using it to dip with the water and the charcoal and just going over it um long strokes uh kind of going in the same direction i want that background to go so if you actually did see any strokes it would all be going the same kind of way and the more you layer it like if you layer it multiple times it's gonna cover up those brush strokes and it'll be darker too so you don't have to worry about that Now I'm just kind of going around the lion's fur. I know that the uh, little sketch that I did underneath, you can barely see it, but I didn't really want it standing out that much. So I purposely made it light like that. So that way it's not going to end up showing through. And if it does show through on the whites that I use on the charcoal, then I'll just erase it. So you'll, you'll see throughout the painting whenever I'm doing it that I might take out my eraser and start erasing some of the lines just so that way I can kind of get them off of there but in all reality it's really not too big of a deal because we're using charcoal and it's black I mean just the same as the lines that I use to uh, sketch it out now here's the second coat as you can tell it kind of somewhat dried I mean it just it dries pretty quick but not completely because of how saturated it is and I went ahead and went over it again and you can just tell just how dark it gets so it really does a really nice job if you have the tinted charcoal to give those a try I mean use it as a background like this it's it's amazing I actually really truly enjoyed working with it it was very quick and it made it more of a solid color even though it is charcoal it just it made it look so much like more like a paint kind of look to it, a painterly look, but yet it still had that charcoal kind of, uh, what should I say, not really shiny or anything like that. It had that matte look to it. I used a little bit of a brush, just uh, one of those little blender brushes and just kind of went over it a little bit, but it had dried so quick. And as you can tell when I'm using this hair dryer too, I mean, it changes from like that glossy color to like a really matte, ashy color. So it doesn't get 
pitch pitch black I mean as black as I would want it I mean I liked it when it was wet and another thing too that I noticed is that the paper did buckle so even though I had it taped down it kind of buckled a little bit and made those little you know like whenever paper gets wet and it does that little bubble kind of thing by using the hair dryer, even though it had to, I mean, it took me a lot longer to dry it with a hair dryer because it absorbs so much of the water. It still, once dried, completely flattened out. <laughs> I mean, it looks perfectly normal. There's no bubbles in it whatsoever. It went completely back to flat. So I was really happy with that. So I definitely would recommend, um, using something like that for a background um, even though you're using the water use a hair dryer on it it will go back it just might take you a little bit longer with that hair dryer to dry completely out but it does a really good job now here I'm using the um, a lot of the pencils actually I got a lot of different charcoal pencils to kind of try out and the ones I went with for this lion was the charcoal um, pencils from Create a Color. And the one that you're seeing me use is like the little stick and it's also from Create a Color. So they have these little sets that you can get of charcoal. And they got like a black and white set, which is really, really nice. It's got a lot of your white blocks charcoal blocks it's got your pencils and the darkest of them happen to be the black chalk that comes in the set I absolutely love it that is actually the darkest of all the charcoals that I've actually tried out and I've tried out quite a few and I did a little swash of all the different brands but this one here seems to be the best or at least the darkest, should I say. And here I'm using a blending stump. So I'm going over with the stick um, from a really dark color that I had of the Creative Color blocks. And I went ahead and uh, used it all over on the bottom. Then I went ahead and grabbed one of the lighter color charcoal blocks and used it toward the top to kind of get a little bit lighter. And now I am using right here that you can see this was probably uh, I've never done it before, but it came with this. It came with the charcoal set, but it was one of those leather polishing little things that they come in the little set. So I decided I was like, OK, I want to go ahead and smooth it out. So I started using it on it and it really did smooth it out. But I didn't like that after I started to use it toward the top up here, because now I'm working with the charcoal block going over the top I went ahead and used that little leather polishing thing and I noticed in the light it had kind of like what polish would do it started to have little shiny spots in it and I was like oh my god no 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 we can't have shiny on my charcoal <laughs> this is not good so I kind of went over it again real quick which you'll be able to see coming up I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself but I went ahead and had to take a uh, just a regular uh, Viva paper towel, just a soft one, and I just went over it with it. And I did a really good job of just blending together and a lot better than just using uh, the soft tools that I got. Because sometimes these little soft tools, I mean, I've tried to use it and I'll still see a lot of like where the soft tool little shape goes across and you're like okay now I see the soft tool impression go across there well if you just take a soft paper towel and just kind of go across you know the same direction that you want it going like I've been going from left to right or right to left then it leaves it a lot smoother so you don't really see any of those little bitty soft tool marks all over <laughs> <clears throat> and here I'm using the blending stump and what I'm doing here is not just a, a fact of just blending. I'm actually trying to push some of that charcoal into the pastel mat because the pastel mat really does hold a lot of layers, which is really good for pastel. And I love using it for pastel. So this is the first time I'm using it with charcoal. 
but I'm still doing the same type of technique that I would if I was using my pastels by rubbing into a like basically working it into the actual paper itself and there I go again with that leather polishing block and then I started to notice that it started to leave a shine right there and I'm like no that ain't gonna happen so I'd go over it again with my little blending tool and then that's whenever I take out the Viva towel <laughs> And that made it somewhat better. There is no more of that shininess. Sometimes you'll see me take out my hair dryer also. And that's just so that way I can get rid of some of that dust and charcoal dust off of my paper. I don't want to just wipe my hand across it. All right. Now this is a, I zoomed it in a little bit so you guys can see, but I'm actually going to be starting his eye. And I know a lot of people like to see that and see how to do that. So on this, I'm actually just gonna be looking at my reference photo and I'm gonna be paying attention to the darkest darks of it. So here I'm using that Create a Color um, Black Chalk, which is my darkest black that I've got in my charcoal set. And I'm using it to outline and looking by looking at the reference photo where the darkest lines are and so that's what you see me do and you see me concentrate quite a bit I'm kind of slow <laughs> but there I'm creating the pupil and then right around the uh, upper of the eye because that's where it gets really dark because you got that shadow Yeah, you always try and start out, at least I know I do, I always like starting out with the, uh, the darkest parts first. That way you kind of get an outline and, and, and kind of making up your own little reference once you get that dark in there, you kind of know where to go and then you can start layering in. After you put in a dark color, then I'll go to the medium shade of color where it's a little bit dark, I mean it's a little bit lighter but it's not absolutely too light. So I'll go to my, after using the dark, I'll go to my medium on the charcoal and then start working my way away from that pupil. And then after that, then I'll go to maybe my light, uh, my light or my, what it would be, my hard um, charcoal pencil and start working a little bit of that in there. And then I'll be able to go with my white and even though it's really bright white whenever you lay it in there just remember that whenever you lay down those darkers like the medium and the hard next to it on the charcoal pencils once you take that little blending stump and just barely rub you don't have to work it and you know work it completely out i mean don't over blend it should i say but if you do just a little bit of it lightly then it'll actually mix in a little bit with those other lighter and medium colors that you put in there so it'll actually soften it out and make it not too too white you want to leave those really white uh spots for the reflection in his eyes that should be your brightest whites You see, I haven't taken that blending stump in there yet. Now I'm just kind of laying out those brightest whites of those uh, reflection in his eyes. So right now I'm just laying out color. I haven't blended it, so that's why it's all a little choppy there. Not very smooth. Now I'm taking my darker color and just kind of going in and around those little white areas to make them stand out a little bit more. Maybe darken it up. And 
and there's like a medium or a light. I can't really see which one that is, but it's probably going to be a medium if I'm working toward the bottom of it because of that dark, the darkest color around the lid. Now there's my blend in stump and see how I'm just barely just kind of touching it and rubbing it just a little bit so where it kind of blends in a little bit, but I don't want to completely wash it out. So it's just, and I did this with a nice clean blending stump whenever I'm working with the lighter colors. <clears throat> and then when I go to a darker color, I'll just turn it over on the other side and work with one side being the darkest and I use on my darks and then I'll flip it around and use the other side for like the super whites that I just want to blend out a little bit and not get that too much of a dark coloration to it. Adding a little bit more white to it. Blend it out a little bit. You know, smoothing, I'm just smoothing the edges around the top. So I kind of work back and forth, you know, I don't, I mean, I spend a little bit of time on it. Sometimes I'm happy with it and other times, you know, I look at it and think, eh, I'm not too happy with it yet. I still need to work on it some more and you'll see me go back and forth, back and forth. And that's the one thing that's good about charcoal is it's a very forgiving medium. So for anybody who's new and just starting out, I mean, this is an awesome medium to practice to try out to do you can do amazing work with it but also you can I mean if you think that you messed up I mean you you really can't I mean you just all you do is just go back over it I mean darken it up then relighten it and change the way it looks so it's very forgiving And here I'm kind of dabbing around the pupil just to where I can kind of blur it out a little bit because you don't want a perfect circle. I mean, you don't want it completely, you can tell it's a circle. So in the pupil, you kind of blend it out just a little bit around the edges. And there you go back with the white again. And that's just what I do. I go back and forth and until I'm completely happy with it. So now I'm starting to work with the fur around the eye. And all this is, is just going to be putting in your darks and then adding your lights. I mean, by looking at your reference photo, just follow it. I mean, you see darks in there, just start adding your darks. Right now I'm creating the eyelid around the eye. Which that pencil right there it could be either a medium or a hard on it sometimes if I'm not for sure if I'm just like okay I don't know if I should make this too dark or you know to, or to, you know I don't want it to be too light I usually go with a hard charcoal pencil so that way it's kind of lighter and then I can always adjust it I can always make it darker or I can always go lighter so either way, I mean, it. I 
And now I'm just going ahead and putting in all the darks where I see darks in the ref out of the reference photo. And the one thing to always remember, and it's very, very important for this, is whenever you're doing a charcoal piece, whenever you're doing basically any kind of piece for any medium, you always want to look at the animal's fur and which direction it goes. So that is very, very important. Now, if you end up getting to a spot where it's like super, super tiny, tiny fur, I mean, it's like, it's not long. Usually I kind of do that more of a smooth area look to it and not really add in all the little fur details because short fur, I mean, from a distance, it looks smooth. So I don't put in a whole bunch of detail into that with the little bitty marks of fur everywhere. I only do it in places that you can actually see the little fur like actually sticking up like it's an actually a decent amount of fur sticking up. And I'm talking about like areas like even on his nose, you know how flat the fur is on, a, on the lion's nose. It's not really fluffy or anything. So I kind of make that smoother. But yeah, here I'm just going over all the lines, like the dark areas in the fur. And usually what I do whenever I look at my reference photo, whether I have it on like my laptop or my, or my, like my iPad, or if you got it on any kind of computer, it makes it really nice to be able to zoom in. And you can kind of, if you wanted to get the real small details of where the darks are and where your lights are, it makes it really easy to do that. Because I do know that if you ever do print out a reference photo, it's kind of hard to be able to see all the stuff that's in a printer because the printer can print, but it, I don't know. Every time I've ever printed from a printer, it always came out kind of blurry. You couldn't really tell all the fine little details like you can looking at, you know, an iPad or looking at a computer. You're able to see a lot more. But here I'm putting in my darks and then I'll go over it with my blend and stuff and just kind of smooth it out a little bit and then I'll just rework it over and over again, making it a little darker each and every time. And if I need it a little lighter or put the lights in, then it's so much easier to put that white charcoal pencil over the top of the darker colors. You can actually see more of the white stand out too. And if you use your blend and stump, with the white on the dark, you can actually make a medium color to it or a smoother color. If you wanted to kind of darken up that white, not make it too, too bright, just adding a little bit of that hard charcoal to it, just a little touch of it and then blending it with your stump, you can actually get it a little bit like not so bright. I don't know how to put it. It's like an in between not to wear the hard's too dark and the white's too white. If you add a little bit to it, you can kind of mix it together and it just kind of brings that tone down on the white. Now I did notice on my charcoal pencil, since this is the first time that I'm ever using this set of Create a Color charcoal set, I've never used them before. I think the only ones that I really used was the Generals. I've used them um, a little bit. I have used 
quite a bit of the Derwent charcoals. And I did like those. But I did notice one thing with the, the charcoal from Create a Color was that on the medium, it would be medium, soft, and hard of the pencils and of the blocks that they come with. They have like the different hard, medium, soft of the actual charcoal blocks. And those, and I mean, it was like almost every single one of them, but I would actually be using them and find a little piece of like a hard grit in it, almost like it felt like a rock whenever you're like using it and then you would feel it kind of scrape at your paper, which I did not like that. So I was having to go really, really soft just in case I felt that kind of scrape the paper. Then I knew that I needed to take out like a sanding block to kind of get that little piece of grit out of there. And there was actually quite a bit of grit um, in the darkest one of the... Uh, create a color blocks and it was kind of like I would scratch it with my nail trying to find if I could feel it and try and get it you know get it out so I wasn't really caring for that too much that was kind of a little bit of a hassle um would it be enough to where it'd be make and break on me uh not really because these these colors I really did enjoy them they were actually really really dark so I actually really like that, that I could get the blackest black out of it, but which, which the chalk, the create a color chalk black, it actually, I don't think I ever, I mean, I don't, I mean, I can't really remember, but I don't think I really hit too much of that grit in it. If I did, it was very, it didn't happen all the time. So that was good. Now on this, you can just see that I kind of add in some more darks. If I need to darken it up in an area to where I'm like, okay, I need to darken it up a little bit with these, you know, little hairs that are around there. I'll go ahead and take out my darkest dark and I'll use it here and there and just kind of barely kind of blend it out. I'm not blending as much as I would at the beginning. Like at the beginning, I'll be blending quite a bit to kind of get that softer look. But then whenever I go back over it like two or three times on like the very last time that I do it, I'll kind of take my blending stump and just barely go over it once. Just just to hit it once to knock off that, um, how should I put it, that textured look. And I'll just kind of knock that off to where it gives it more of a softer look to it. So I don't try and over blend too much whenever it comes to the last layers. And I'm here, I'm just darkening out the outlines of the darkest areas in his face. And then up through the middle of his forehead, he had some really dark areas there too. And as you go along, let me know, I know I do this, but I'll go along doing like an area here and then I'll just kind of eyeball it and when I'm looking over at the other side that I have done I may see areas that I'm like wanting to go back and you know touch it up a little bit add a little bit more darker to the some of the areas and I'll kind of go back and forth like that throughout the whole painting which is nothing wrong with that that's just something that you're as you're putting it all together you kind of see that it needs to kind of how should I put it? Kind of blend together. So there I'm kind of making it the dark areas and then I'm using my blended stub to kind of blend out and away from that area. So that way I can go over it with my medium charcoal or my lighter charcoal or even use some whites here and there and the whites kind of stand out a little bit more.
But every time I'm doing this with the, like my pencil and going over these marks and just kind of going over these areas, I'm always trying my best to follow the direction of the fur. Now on to his nose. I'm using the dark um, chalk. It's the black chalk pencil, which is my darkest one, and kind of outlining the areas in the reference photo that actually has the dark areas. So you'll see the dark lines, like the really deep, deep dark lines. And I kind of go at it by outlining it first in those areas. Now if the line ends up, like if you're looking at your reference photo and that line ends up stopping and it looks more of a lighter color, then I won't put the darkest color around it. I'll only put it where it is in the reference photo. So now I'm filling in his nostril with the darkest part, but you see I leave that little bit of gap in there because I want to take a uh, medium charcoal and kind of make it to where it kind of lightens up a little bit. So there's my medium charcoal. Making the little spots on his nose. Now I'm going over with a blending step, just barely around it. I'm what I don't want to go over and just smudge all my little black detail marks that I put in his nose, but I go around them with the blending stump, just barely to kind of blend it out a little bit. And now I'm blending the outside edges just really close, just kind of smoothing it out. And the one thing on working, like this has definitely been a little different than working on something like the um, Cancel Me Tints, like the pastel paper that I have used before that's like a little bumpy. It's, it's got a little bit of texture to it. Using this is a little bit smoother, but it doesn't actually, I was actually surprised. I thought that maybe the charcoal would kind of be similar to a pastel when working it on the paper and how it blends. But in all reality, the pastel, when you use a pastel and you blend, it really blends out like really smooth, like butter just kind of blends really nicely and blends out. Now, if you took like a soft tool and you blend it over pastel, it would just like make a big long streak, you know, cause you could just go over it and just blend smoothly out. But when you work with charcoal on the same type of paper, if you try doing that, you don't get that far. Like it does not really move that much. Uh, I mean, it still blends out a little bit, but it really does hold on to that charcoal really, really well. It doesn't like to I mean, it still blends, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't blend as good as pastel. So, I mean, there's pros and, I mean, I wouldn't say it's really a con or anything. It's just how it works. And I actually really did enjoy it because, I mean, it still did a very good job. Once you got several layers in, the blending got a little bit easier, but you couldn't like blend it further out you know more than what a pastel would be I mean they would blend out a lot more and cover a large area I guess I should say so 
So now that I got his nose in, I'm just kind of going around the outside of it, just kind of smoothing it out and trying to get that color to kind of go upward so that way I can put a lighter layer on top. That way you got that contrast between the light and the dark. Now I'm kind of putting in some of my lighter layers on the top of his nose, but his nose, it's like I, I worked with it and then I started doing the lines that I seen in the picture, but sometimes you don't want to put in more than what you should because I know his nose had a little bit more of a softer look to it because of the shorter hair. So when I started adding in some of these creases of darks, and then try and blend them out, it kind of looked a little funny. It didn't look right. So I went back over his nose at least a good two to three more times before I felt like, okay, that looks 10 times better. I'm happy with that. So just remember, if you're doing a charcoal piece and everything, you know, you may have to go over it a few times. I mean, you may look at something and say, well, it still don't look right. Well, just keep working at it. Work on something else. Work at a different area. The, you know, whatever you're working on, work at a separate area. Look at it. Go back. Work on it again. So sometimes you just need that break. You know, if you're looking at something, you're like, well, that just don't look right. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, that just every time I mess with it, it just doesn't get any better. It almost makes me feel like it's getting worse. Work on something else. Work on an eye work on the top of his head, work on, you know, on his fur, work on his mouth. And as you're working on that, then go back, you'll, you'll go back and, and work on it again. And if it starts, it'll start slowly coming together. So sometimes your brain just needs a break, you know, and the nose, or it could be an eye, or it could be an ear that's giving you trouble, whatever it is, Give yourself a break, go to a different area, work on it, and then go back and try it again. Like relook at your reference photo and and look back at it. It's kind of the same thing on whenever you finish a painting and you think, oh, wow, it's perfect. It's done. And then you come back the next day and you kind of look at it and you're like, hmm, I don't really like that part of whatever it is I'm doing, man, I should have done this. Or maybe if I should have, you know, instead of varnishing it and think I was all done, I'm really not done. There was more that I could have done to that. Well, it's the same kind of thing. Your brain needed that, that rest. You needed that break to kind of step away, work on something else, do something else, come back and work on it again. And you'll get it. Cause right now, as you can tell, I'm working on the nose I'm using the eraser because uh, a little bit of my sketch was kind of showing through. So I got that out. Then I would rework the white, trying to lighten up in the areas of his nose. And I would just go back and forth on it. And then I, you see me all like I was doing earlier. I was working on the top part of his fur, of his head, you know, kind of giving myself that little break away from the nose. Like, okay, I need to give myself a break. My brain needs to go away from it right now. And then I would go back and work on it again. So there's my break. So you can see I'm over there working on the top of his fur. Getting some more of that done. And I'm pretty sure you'll see me work back on his nose again. So there's my break. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, look. There we go. I'm back at his nose. Break's over. Looks like I wanted to add a little bit more of the dark to it. And all throughout this painting, this was a really <clears throat> big painting. Um, the size of it was, well, I mean, it was an 18 by 24 inch size. And I mean, it was a long time spending on it. And whenever you spend, you know, a while working on it, sometimes your brain does need that little break. And then I'm coming back to the nose again, reworking it. I mean, you got to imagine, I mean, the eye was super, super small. And you see me at least do at least two, three, possibly even a fourth layer in it. You know, I kept on adding color to it and adding color to it. And it was such a smaller little thing. I mean, his eye is not as big as his nose. So, of course, if you're going to add three to four layers or so to it, you're going to have stages. The first stage is never the pretty stage. The first stage is usually the ugly stage. It gets better with each stage. A lot of times you see me taking my little break there where you don't see my hand. And a lot of times I'll be sharpening my pencils or trying to get that little grit out. And here, this is the reason why I was taking that little bit of time just to sharpen my pencils. So that way I can get a finer point because we are working on eye number two. Same as the other eye. I'm looking at the reference photo. And I'm doing the outline of the eye, but in the reference photo, if it wasn't like the darkest black, then I wouldn't have put that there. So follow your reference photo. If it's super, super dark, the blackest of all blacks, then that's where you take out your darkest dark for it. And see, I kind of stopped with that line, kind of looking at my reference photo because I was just making sure that that darkest dark line did meet up there. Because if it didn't and it ended up going to maybe a medium color, then I wouldn't have put that darkest dark there. I would have put a little bit lighter of a dark. So I would have went to my medium. But in this case, it was dark and darker than the rest. So I went ahead and made the complete eye, eye line to it. Okay, now I am 
putting my white little highlight underneath there so that way I know where it's at. And that pencil there is going to probably be a medium. It's not going to be the blackest of blacks, but it's going to be a little bit lighter, so that's probably the medium. Now that is a dark. So the medium, it looks like it was in the center. And now I'm putting the darkest dark right around the edges there. Now I'm taking that dark on down because in the reference photo it has that really dark dark fur right there. And of course I get sidetracked. So instead of finishing the eye and going with it I decided that I was going to take out my little white pencil and start working on something else. <laughs> that is me. I love jumping around. It's like, oh, why not? I'm already down here to this point of the dark. Might as well pick up my white pencil and work my way back up until I get to that eye. So you don't always have to start with the center of the eye. You can always work your way around, then go back inside the eye. So either way. There we go. There comes the eye. Working on that pupil. It's going to be the darkest dark. I'm making a thicker shadow over the top. Now that's like a medium, which is going to be going right around the edge of it. A little bit lower, so that's going to be more of like a hard, so a little bit lighter of the charcoals, so in stages. It looked like it needed to be a little bit darker in there for the shadow, but not, you know, not the darkest dark. Now I'm taking the white, kind of going over the area that needs to be the lighter color. Now, of course, it's not going to be white, white. Like I said, we only use the white, white and try and keep it that way for the brightest highlights. But in this eye, since his head is turned at an angle, one eye is going to have the highlight. The other one is not going to have the highlight in it because it doesn't have that reflection since his head is turned at an angle. And now I am working over the top of it, kind of creating that little bit of shadow and then using my blender brush, or not my blender brush, now I'm doing a painting, using my blender little stump, blending stump, and kind of blending the outside edges, working my way on the inside, kind of blending it out on the top again. And usually whenever I do the inside of the eye with the white, I'll probably end up either cleaning off my blending brush on a rag or doing like this and taking a fresh clean end of a blending stump and using that to kind of blend out the white. That way I'm not making it any darker. I just want it to go a little bit lighter or I shouldn't say lighter, a little bit darker with the blending 
around the edges with that medium or light charcoal but I don't want to stick like a blending stump that I've used with the super dark charcoal and then go over it because it'll darken it way too much and I don't want to darken it that much Okay, and here I'm adding a little bit of the medium, just kind of branching out away from the pupil. And I'm going back in with some of the dark and kind of breaking up that solid circle because you don't want a perfect circle in there. It wouldn't look realistic. Some pupils might have a solid circle look to it, but you still got a lot of that like it's not as dark as the pupil but it kind of comes away from it around the outside edge and so it makes it look not so perfect and you don't want nothing to look uniform or absolutely perfect when it comes to doing something that's more realism Taking that blending stump and kind of blend it in around the eye. And you'll see me a lot of times. I'll just play around with it. I'll just, you know, go back and forth and see what looks right until I get it just the way I want it. Where it looks just like the reference photo or at least as close as I possibly can to the reference photo. You can always make it a little bit different, but because I know whenever I'm looking at the reference photo, it is just a reference, but that doesn't mean you have to follow it, I guess, to a T. If something does, doesn't look right, I mean, you can always kind of change it a little bit to where it actually looks better. Now I'm going to start branching out away from the eye and just following the reference photo on where the darks are. That's all it is. So we are done with that eye. I came back in and actually I went ahead and added a little bit more dark so there was things that I seen that I wasn't too happy with. <laughs> And you'll find that throughout your work, whenever you're working, you'll go back and forth. And when following and doing the darkest points, I know I know there's a lot of people and I've seen it before. Well, they'll they'll just go throughout the whole entire picture and just lay out all their darks just instantly right away. Just go ahead and do it. And for me, I really do enjoy starting out like in one part of the picture and then just kind of working my way on out instead of doing the whole thing with darks. And then I go back and forth. So that way, I don't know, I guess with me spending a lot of time on just one area, you know, I don't want to get bored with it. So for me, I kind of go back and forth just so that way I'm kind of doing something else different. It's all up to preference, so you kind of do what makes you feel comfortable. If you feel like just working on one area until it's done, then branching out to another area and working on it till it's done, 
if that makes you feel good and it makes you feel more comfortable with doing something like that, go for it. There is no right or wrong to any of this. This is just up to preference. What makes you feel good? What what do you like to do? And there's so many different techniques out there. This is just how I do it. And how I enjoy doing it. So I'm kind of going through there and whenever I'm making any kind of like dark lines or the darker color, I usually try and follow the direction of the fur. So when you're laying in those darker lines where the darks are in your reference photo, try and stay with going in the same direction as the fur. Now I know the first layer, when you go to blend it out with a blending stump, I mean, it, you're working it into that paper, so a lot of your marks will actually disappear and it'll make more of a, kind of like a smudgy mark, but it's actually dark. So you're kind of laying down that first layer, still try and get into the habit, even at the very first part of just going in the same direction as the fur. So there I'm taking, um, that could be the hard charcoal pencil and just kind of outlining and getting that, uh, the darks in on his fur. And with doing a hard, it's like a lighter color charcoal. So that way I can always darken it or lighten it, whichever way. It can, it can go both ways on it. But at least I know it's there and start the base layer of it. Another thing too with charcoal, when you're working with charcoal, <clears throat> you want to start out with some sort of color down on the paper. I mean, as you notice that I am actually working, um, I know this is a new paper with charcoal that I've ever tried. Usually I always use pastel on it, but it is like a gray tone and that would be perfect for like this lion because that's your, that's your middle tone gray is your middle tone paper or your middle tone for your like this black and white charcoal piece it's a middle tone so it works out perfect with if let's just say you blend out a little bit or maybe you want that tone of the paper showing through this is perfect for it so you could actually just leave a little bit of the paper showing through and it'll look just fine Now throughout this piece I was working on his um, on his mane here you'll see that I, uh, I I have the my reference like my sketch that I laid down on there and that doesn't mean I have to follow exactly what the sketches are I mean I kind of see basically I use my sketch to kind of tell me where I am on the reference photo I mean, that's basically what I use it for. Other than that, I'm always looking at the lion whenever I'm doing all of the shading, all of the blending, all of the, you know, the which way the direction of the mane goes or his fur. I'm always looking at that reference photo. So even though I look down and I see my sketch mark lines, I don't necessarily follow them completely. And it's all because... You know, I, I just rough sketched them in. They're not perfect. They're not nowhere near perfect. They're just there to 
give me that that idea okay this is what part of the reference photo I'm on and then I can just go ahead and create and make the main the way I want it Now here you can see that I'm going back to his nose. So even though I created a little bit of his main outline sketch, which I know with him, I kind of went back and forth on his mane and it didn't look right. And I'm like, no, I guess my, you know, I went ahead and did something different in, in compared to the reference photo. And then I went back and changed it. I mean, it's just that easy with charcoal to go back and change something. And you'll see me pick up my pencils and just kind of look at it just to make sure I got well, got the which one I wanted. Because I had a whole bunch of different um, charcoals like in front of me. And whenever I pick up a pencil, I was like, wait just a second, is this the right pencil? I mainly used only one um, charcoal pencil like as far as the white goes I used it mainly throughout the whole entire picture I think there was like one other time that I picked up the creative color and it's like the woodless white um, charcoal pencil but it doesn't have no wood it's like super thin and it's like woodless and it has like a little point on it and I went ahead and used that to kind of give me like the little whiskers and like the little stray hairs and stuff like that. I kind of use that a little bit in it. I did attempt to try and use a charcoal block of um, General's charcoal block, but for some reason, when I used it and tried to do like one little whisker of stray hair, I went back over it just to kind of um, get a rid of like wipe over it with like my soft tool or, or my blending stump just once to get rid of a little bit of the graininess to it. And I found out that it really, whenever I used it, even though I didn't put much pressure on it, I guess it was really sharp or really, I don't know, it was really a hard type of uh, charcoal block that it literally didn't blend very well it just like basically etched itself in there and i was thinking oh my god that's not good no i didn't really care for that too much so i wanted something a little bit more softer than that i wanted a sharp defined line but i didn't want it to be like etched in Now here I'm just going over some little areas with the white fur and just kind of adding a little bit more texture to it. Because up in the top part of his head, it starts to get a little bit more like thicker hair or a little bit longer hair than it does on the nose. So I try to go back and add some more texture to it. And the one thing I noticed whenever I was working on this painting, you know, this is one of my first uh, video lessons going over some of the things that I've done, or at least the lion. But I had a habit of looking over, not just at my reference photo on my big screen, but I would look over at my actual lion and the camera system pulled up way too much detail and made it much, much lighter than what it is. Because then I would look back over on my on my painting and it would look darker and it looked more like it didn't have as much uh, detail as what the camera was pulling out. Like if you put a black mark down and then went over it and it looked really soft on your picture to your eyes. But whenever you looked over at the camera, it was almost as if that dark line was just sticking out right out of his head. I mean, like it didn't belong there. So I was, <laughs> I was kind of fighting myself trying to think, 
should I do something to make the camera happy or am I supposed to do something to make myself happy and know that it's correct on the paper? Because it was, it was really different for me. I never, never experienced that part. I was kind of thrown by it. Like every time I looked over, I'm like, am I judging it by what the computer sees or, or what the camera sees or what my eyes see? So that was definitely a challenge for me. So I decided in all, in all honesty to go ahead and do what it looks good in what's sitting in front of me. <laughs> I'm laying in a lot of the darker areas for his ear. And then I'm working with the blending stump, just working it into all, uh, working it into the paper. So that way, if I can fill the tooth of the paper in with that charcoal, then it makes it so much easier um, whenever you go over with the detailed lines to blend them out. They blend out much smoother. And as you can see, I kind of took that dark and blended up over the areas that didn't have nothing on it. And that way it gave it that mid-tone and helps out also when you add that mid-tone and then go it over with your detail to be able to show up a little bit better. I used a paper towel just to kind of soften it so I didn't have any marks of my blending stump within the ear. Adding that white on the outside edge for the contrast and now I'm going in the same direction as the fur so looking at your reference photo following the direction of the fur then using the blending stump and just kind of blend that out and make it more softer and this is the fur that I go back and forth on I know I've went ahead and done some like kind of coming up over his ear same as a reference photo would look or at least similar to it I mean nothing's perfect on it but I noticed that it didn't really care for around the face of his like his cheek right there that they got that kind of bothered me I kind of went back and forth on it until I finally was happy with it And here I'm adding some more black into the ear, making that a little bit darker. Because as you blend, even with the whites that's going over the top, it can lighten it a little bit around the outside. So I'm just making some adjustments. adjustments. Boy, words are hard. And then um, going over, going over with the blending stump, so that way it's blended in and. Because I'm wanting like more of a softer feel to it. Now with this step here, whenever I was working over the side of his fur, I had to, I kind of looked at the reference photo, saw that he had some dark lines in there, but then I kind of made him a little bit big. So I wor reworked that a few times before I was happy with it. So whenever you're doing your artwork or doing your charcoal, should I say, like I said, it's a very forgiving medium. So you can rework it as many times as you basically want. The clear fonte pastel mats, uh, it works really good with holding a lot of charcoal in it. So it was actually nice working with. 
I do have to say though, out of my pastels and my charcoal, using it on the Clarifonte pastel mat, I do like working with my pastels better than I do the charcoal, but it's still, I like how smooth the charcoal came out looking compared to other um, pastel papers that are more rough textured or has that small rough texture with Really, I mean, it, that's the only tooth it's got, but this Clarifonte pastel mat is a little bit different. It's not just bumpy for meaning it's got texture. It's more of a smooth kind of velvety kind of feel to it, I would say. So it actually has like, I don't even know how to put it. Like you can actually add more layers to it and it sticks in there. I mean, it really does hold in a lot of the charcoal so I was really happy with it I still like my pastels I think a little bit better and I think the only reason why I would even say that is just because of how I can blend out with my pastels and it go a lot more I don't know how to put this like it covers a bigger area whenever I'm blending than it does with the charcoal. Now I made it darker in those areas where I blended out like some of the medium and hard um, charcoals in there and then I'll just go back over with some of my white for the fur and then that way it kind of stands out it adds that depth and dimension like I said I mean if you're doing a charcoal piece always work in layers I mean if you add just one layer that's just your beginning layer it's usually not the prettiest your second layer gets a little better third layer gets even better fourth layer you know, you may actually just have it. So work in multiple layers. There I'm adding some more to it. See, I'm adding that white. Gives it a little bit more definition, a little bit more depth. And you can kind of see a little bit underneath of the um, like the hard or the medium um, charcoal that I actually added those lines and I went in the same direction that the fur would go. And by layering like that, it actually looks like there's so many little strands of hair that's in that just because of the layers that you go over it and blend out. there I'm kind of blending out the little white so that way it's not just a bunch of straight lines everywhere I want it to be more softer so I'm adding in some more of the shades the darker shades so that way it adds the definition and, and brings out the fur layers. What brings out a lot of the depth is adding that contrast between light and dark. So when you have a lighter color and then you have that dark backing right behind it for the shadowing it does add depth to your painting
Now you see me going back in and adding some of these little darker highlights in there. That's because I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to it and I didn't want it to look too flat. So I'll go back through and I'll add some of the darkest little areas or make it a little bit darker so that way I, I can come back through with a white and make more of that dimension look. So that way it's not too flat. Kind of blending those out to make them look a little bit softer. And then I'll be able to go back through with the white. There I'm taking like a hard charcoal or a medium and just kind of going through again. Because with that dark underneath, when I go over it with the white, it'll add so much dimension to it. So dark first, white second. And there I'm adding the little strands in there. Now I'm going ahead and adding a little bit more dimension, a little bit more hairs. Kind of bringing certain areas more like out. Now I'm using that, the darkest charcoal stick that I had out of the create a color line and here I'm that's the reason why I would use the stick is not just for if you wanted to add individual little fine hairs by using like one of the edges but you can also use the whole stick itself as covering a larger area of dark And that's what I'm doing right here, which I'll have to do several layers too. So going over it again. And this time I'm actually using my um, soft tool. And that soft tool was already saturated with a lot of the black. So kind of use that for my advantage by spreading it out and by adding. And you can even take your little... Um, your little charcoal block and kind of use like if you have any excess powder off of it or anything like that just kind of blend it with your soft tool like if you have one of those I don't know what they're called boy that word just left my mind it's almost like a like a sander or well you can use a sandy block too and you know how you sand your pencils down and then just kind of like get that ex excess charcoal powder and then just dip your little soft tool in it and you can kind of spread all over your painting kind of giving it that undertone a little bit darker and that's what I did there because the main as it tapers down it just gets darker so I wanted to have a good undertone and not that not as light of an undertone as the paper I'm just using that soft tool to kind of blend it out, defining my lines and where, where the direction of the fur goes.
Now here I go ahead and start defining where the fur is going to go and what direction by using my white charcoal. In a way I did the fur, I did it this way and then I had to go back and make more adjustments to it because it kind of got carried away with the marks that I made. And sometimes whenever I make marks on a paper where I'm kind of laying out the fur and the fur direction and, and these, you know, chunks and, and um, I'll kind of look at it and just go with it and say, okay, I can see the fur. I can see which direction it goes. It needs to go this way or that way. But then at the end, <laughs> I look back at the reference photo. I'm like, okay, let's be realistic. The fur did not, was not that short in that area or it needs to do this differently. And so then I can just go back and make the little minor adjustments. Just like those little pieces there. It looks like those little short pieces I kind of threw in there. Yeah, I kind of get carried away with myself there. So I'll have to go back through and make some adjustments toward the end. Now with the darker pieces at the very, very bottom, um, I was using like the hard or the medium. I think majority of it was medium, if not the hard, to kind of show up little like uh, faint lines that went into the darkness. And then I used the hard here to kind of make the first lines before doing that. So that way it did a really nice transition. I think I went back over it with the white, but I didn't put as much of the white in because I wanted it to look like it was fading out in the darkness. See, I'm kind of reevaluating how that fur went. And here I'm kind of taking out some of those shorter pieces because I was like, yeah, it shouldn't be there. So I'm adjusting it more to the reference photo than me having a getting wild with the fur here. <laughs> Sometimes I can't help it. I get excited and absolutely enjoy working with it so my imagination can get the best of me sometimes <laughs> but I usually go back and fix it And see, even at this point, I don't think I even finished adjusting it all. I was just slowly making the, the changing over, like just slowly kind of making the adjustments little by little. And you can see by the real time on this, uh, just how slow, just taking it easy. 
this is, you know, there ain't no rush. Here, I'm going to be making more adjustments to it. I'm blending out some of the white that I've already put in there to make it look softer. Highlighting a little bit more around the outside edges. see I add a little bit more of the white in there but I kind of blend it out with that darker color so that way it kind of it doesn't make it as bright but it's still there so I'm using the really pitch darks that are around it using advantage of that by incorporating it whenever I blend kind of adding a little bit of that darkness to it to kind of dull it down like bring down the tone of white See, I don't put too much white in that. Just a couple little streaks. Adding that dark in there to add shadow. Give it some dimension. Some depth. Because you want that contrast between light and dark to be dark dark so that way it gives more of a realism and, and depth to it. There I go back working on the cheek again. Always end up spotting something out of the corner of my eye. I always got to adjust. <laughs> Now I'm making some more adjustments on that fur because it's still not, I guess, where I want it to be. And see, even his little cheek, you know, I'm adding some of that white charcoal block to it just to kind of give it a little sharper edges, individual little furs on the around the outside edge. But then I'll come back through and I should be able to blend that out just a little bit just to make it soft. So I'm not actually rubbing really hard. It's just a light, a light little brush or just to kind of knock off the edges. I don't want that. Um, I want more of a smoother look and not like you can see a rough edge. You know how charcoal is whenever you dry, you know, it's not smooth when you first lay down. A line or anything unless you have your pencil like super super sharp but usually by the end of my painting with a well I guess it's not as much as a charcoal but it does happen but even with my pastels if I were to use like a regular pencil sharpener like handheld little little bitty 
metal sharpener or something, it ends up dulling down real quick. <clears throat> so usually with that, I have a different type of pencil sharpener that, um, I forgot the name of it. Hold on. I use like a, the Hovel uh, pencil plane. It's like a little sharpener, but it's got a blade so I can actually rub the pencil on it and sharpen it. And that way I can usually control whether or not I'm cutting the wood or cutting into the actual charcoal or pastel and I don't have to dole out my blades so much. And then to get a sharp point, I just use the sandpaper to make a sharp point. It's usually the best way to go. So that way I'm not like going through pencil sharpeners. I'm doing little minor adjustments and there I'm just taking my black charcoal kind of taking away that sharp edge on his cheek and now I'm taking a white and adding in some more little furs individual furs So I'm still going, trying to go in the best, you know, the best that I can going in the same direction as the fur with that white. Now, whenever you're doing this and you're doing the little marks all over, trying to go in the same direction as the fur, it will look really streaky. You got these little like spaghetti line looking things all over. Don't worry about it. It's your first layer. Go ahead and blend that out softly. You can go over it again. You can either lighten it or darken it, either which way, but work in multiple layers so that way you add that dimension. Now here I'm creating the outside line of the fur. And that right there is a shoulder, so I kind of put the white down first so I knew where it was at. But I should be toning that down because it was actually more of a shadow, like more of a darker color compared to the main that's going around so I'll blend that out and then I should go back through with a little bit darker color there and then I should blend it out a little bit more so that way it's not like sticking out too too much because that was supposed to be a little bit darker than the main around them I'm making some more adjustments to his fur in this area because I noticed that it still didn't look right. Wasn't happy with that. Needed to make that a little bit more uniform. So going back over it and reshaping it. And it's just that easy. I mean, you had a short piece there that kind of looked a little, ang you know, like it went in a different direction. And all it took was just adding some dark to it, blending it out, and then adding the white. And just as simple as that, I could rechange what I done just because the direction of the fur was wrong or, you know, I just wasn't happy with it. It's an easy fix. Now it looks a little bit gritty, but you should be able to take like a soft tool or a blender and be able to smooth out those edges once you get done. 
making that a little bit longer. And then there I'm just making some little like straggly ends because the fur should always, you always get those little wispy hairs kind of coming out here and there. So I kind of make a little bit of those in there. Now I'm taking a soft tool and kind of going over it just to kind of knock down those rough edges and make it more a softer look. And remember on this too, because I mean, I noticed it too, is once you knock off those edges and you're just kind of lightly going, like you always want to go in the same direction, like going down, your little soft tool or whatever it is you're blending with can get a little dirty. And when you start back at the top to blend down again in one direction, you can end up leaving like a little mark where you started and then where you stroke down and then you start again up at the top and then make another mark. So the best way to fix this is really try and uh, try and work on it because I know with me I always want to just keep going and keep blending but before you do that next stroke or maybe like two or three strokes clean it off on a paper towel like a Viva paper towel or any kind of paper towel just wipe it clean and then do it again and then wipe it clean and then do it again or you know, if it doesn't make it on the second mark where you can start seeing where you started again, then you might be able to do like two to three more strokes or four more strokes before you start getting that dark look popping in there where you started. Now here I'm kind of going around the outside edges, making those little wispy hairs sticking out. And then I am putting the white in where his other ear is at. Showing where that's at. And there I'm blending that out because I didn't blend it out. It just made the marks. So I went back to it and blended it. Time to work on the top of his head. And with this one here too, once I got done um, putting in like the layout of his fur on this, I mean, I wasn't happy with, and there I go with the eraser. I'm just erasing those little sketch lines because I don't need them. They're in there and I'm like, yeah, kind of know where I'm at. Using my hair dryer, kind of blowing them off with the hair dryer instead of like using a... You can always use like an eraser brush, but even with that, if you brush over your artwork with charcoal, you can smudge it and then we have to real go over it again. But so I've been using my hair dryer. I'm thinking I'm just that lazy. <laughs> so here I am making the outside edges where the fur is, where it, which direction it goes using that white. just by looking at the reference photo. So I'm not even looking at any of those reference marks that I had down because now I'm already to the point where, you know, you just look at the reference photo and you should know where, how the, you know, which direction it goes. You know, you know what point you're at. Now on this drawing here, I had to make some changes. If you look at the reference photo, which was a good reference photo, I never would have noticed it until I started drawing it. Like actually, well, not even, even in the sketch, my rough sketch, I mean, I still didn't notice it until after I started putting the fur in on the top of his head, that it looks like he's got something like the fur sticks up way too much of a point like sticking up and it, it just looked kind of funny to me like I didn't really notice it when I looked at the reference photo but once I was actually putting it down on paper it just didn't look right so you'll see me going over all the fur and then get to the top of his head where this big pokey thing sticks up which I mean that's if 
if you were doing like a pet portrait and that's the way their fur is, you know, it looks funny, but that's, that's what it is. I mean, kind of got to go with it. But as far as doing a, not a pet portrait, but you're doing something to make it look good or for your own self or anything like that adjust it you know the photo may have it like that but it actually looks better without his fur sticking up that high on the top then shorten it down a little bit make it look more softer you're the artist so you're able to be able to make the photo look better i mean make the picture look better than the photo you can make those adjustments and that's what I ended up doing. So even though his hair sticks out on the top, I kind of brung that down a little bit, kind of made it more softer and not look like, I don't know, like alfalfa or something. I'm not for sure. <laughs> he had that thing sticking up. He had a bad hair day. I always say that because I always have bad hair days. I think every day is a bad hair day for me. I know his struggle. And here I am just layering in, looking at the areas and just seeing what catches my eye. Putting in my darkest darks on the fur. And then using the white to outline which direction the fur goes. Adding in my darks and then I'm um, working the ear around the outside of the ear that's kind of sticking up up there in the back. It's kind of the same as I did with the other ear except the other ear was more in a shadow so it went really super super dark. Now as far as the other ear he's kind of turned where his head's more like in the light on that other side so you don't have that dark dark um, black chalk that I would have to use to darken it that deep dark so I'm kind of keeping it light but that means I need to make a contrast so between the fur in front of it so it would still have to be darker than the fur that's in front of it the fur in front of it has to be lighter so that way it's sticking out above the ear the same rule light over dark I don't know if I like that I don't like making rules should have never said that <laughs> throw the rules out preference light over dark but in some cases I do dark over light so And here I'm kind of defining which way the fur goes. Now the tips of the hair like when it comes to like right there above his forehead where they have a little bit of shorter hair I usually make it dark and then I'll put like white for the tips of the hair and then just kind of slowly and softly blend out and there I am making the adjustment so I didn't really like how it was sticking up so high didn't want it that high so what I did is use my darkest black and kind of went over it taking it down
take it down just a bit. I want it there, but I don't want it out there. <laughs> That's too much. Okay. So same kind of concept. Going back and forth with my darks and lights. Softening it out. Making the little shorter hairs closer to his head. And there I'm making some more adjustments. So I'm bringing that down just a little bit by adding the darkest dark around the outside edges. And then I take a dry paper towel and just kind of blend it out so that way I'm smoothing it out. And now I'm doing the little wispy hairs. And that's using that little bitty, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's Create a Color, from Create a Color, and it's like a woodless, um, past, or not pastel, woodless chalk, or woodless charcoal, sorry, pencil. And it's just really thin. It's super, super thin, and it's woodless. And it's easy just to kind of use that to get those little wispy hairs here and there. Kind of softening out all those little marks. Looks like I'm adding some dark for some dimension. And the three top pencils that I actually used, I mean, that's, um, yep. It would be just like the three top pencils would just be sim keeping it simple. It was hard, medium, and then I used that to create a color chalk black. That is my dark. That was like the darkest black I could find out of all the different brands that I was like trying out. And I was super excited about it. So out of those, those were basic, the basic three that I was using. I know that they had the charcoal blocks and stuff like that they used around the outside to cover large areas, but... Those were my three top pencils in this in this uh, painting. So now I'm adding some more of the dimension. Added a little bit of darks for kind of showing underneath. Doing the white lines and then making his cheek kind of stand out a little bit more there by adding a little bit more white. There I am bouncing around again. So had to work on his little, I don't know, cheek right there. His little mouth. I don't know <laughs> where his whiskers are. Going the same direction as the fur. And then I'll end up softening it out with a soft tool or, I mean, you could use a blender too. Either way, just set the softly to it though. I really do prefer those little soft tools though. But usually the soft tools, I come in and use those toward my like third or fourth layer. So that way I'm not getting rid of you know, it's not too abrasive and it won't get rid of some of my detail underneath. Unless I lightly use the blending stump, but I usually use the blending stump for blending at the beginning stages. And there I'm adding some more 
detail with the fur and blended it into his face a little better. So just little minor details. There's the little whiskers. I wanted those nice and faint. I didn't want them all standing out too much. So this is where you make I make the final little adjustments. Now there's some more little whiskers and there is a little wispy hair. So I'm using that little crate of color woodless charcoal to go around all over and I'm just making little marks everywhere. And I mean, I'm not really thinking about where the fur direction is. I'm not really thinking about anything like that. I'm just kind of going through it, making these little wispy hairs because they're the little straggly ones that don't know where they're going anyway. So got to have them too. It's kind of like me whenever I work on a painting. I'm pretty much everywhere. Well, so are those little wispy hairs. They're there too. You can't forget about them. And then I take my little soft tool and I'll just go over those little wispy hairs and just kind of barely knock them down so that way they're not all in there. And there's how I judge where I'm putting my signature for a completed charcoal painting.